We're trying to integrate technology, exercise physiology and psychology to understand how the human physiologic and cognitive uh, ability is impacted once the pilot ascends to a certain altitude. So we're concerned with hypoxia, which is the reduction in the uh, concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere and how the cognitive ability is altered at that altitude and the physiology, which is the heart rate and the energy expenditure of the individual. A lot of this research really does have real world implications. So individuals fly in helicopters, they fly in airplanes, and then are asked to respond very, very quickly once they arrive. So you can imagine a situation where military personnel are flown to a very high altitude. Immediate upon leaving the helicopter, they have, then have to respond. So they have to make critical decisions, they have to be able to run, they have to be able to engage in with whatever's going on around them. The military, especially for the research we're doing here, which is moderate altitude hypoxia, uses a lot of helicopters. Army, uh, especially. So what you're dealing with is helicopters that are flying at 12,000, up to maybe 14,000 feet, where the rules and regulations say you can fly all day. There's no restriction around 12,000 feet. The problem is there is, or at least expected, impairment. There is impairment to memory. That's been checked before. But it's not been tested with actual performance, such as with a sim in there. The pilot will be in the chamber for about two hours Well, he will acclimate or get used to the chamber and that will be in a normal condition and in a reduced oxygen condition. So that will be the hypoxic condition. Then the pilot will fly the simulator or the sim and he will be probably impaired and his oxygen levels or oxygen saturation will be declined and his cerebral oxygenation will also be declined. And so we will see how impaired he will be under those conditions. I'm doing what's known as an instrument flight, IFR, so I do not have visual reference outside. I'm flying strictly by the instruments themselves. So um, that typically is considered the most dangerous type of flying. Not always, but, but typically. The problem with hypoxia is every person has individual symptoms. No two people are going to have exactly the same symptoms. And when you're concentrating on instrument flight, so focusing on the instruments, trying to get information out of them, um, you typically won't detect your symptoms if you don't know them and have experienced them previously. At this point in terms of the research, there's really two big important steps. The first is where we are now, which is better understanding what the problem really is. So at this point, we're starting to barely understand how low levels of oxygen affect the brain and affect the body. Once we're able to do that, then the next big step is what can we do about it? What type of treatment, what type of medications, what type of exercises or strategies can allow a person to function at their best in these situations?